Hey guys, well, um, so as you can see in the background, I'm still finishing up the aileron and I had mentioned in my previous video that I was really concerned that uh, I had manufactured a twist in the aileron. And of course that is something you absolutely don't want. Um, and it turns out that uh, no, <laughs> I, I don't have a twist in my aileron. <laughs> what I have is a twist in my table. <laughs> So when I built this table, uh, I, you know, I, I used heavy lumber and I made sure that, you know, I did the best I could to make sure it was square and flat. Uh, but uh, as you can see in this photo right here, uh, not quite. It's, it's got a, a curve in it. And so when I was putting the aileron down on the table, I'm like, why is this side up so much? You know, it's, I mean, it wasn't even a centimeter, right? It was a, it's a really minor amount. But it was enough that really concerned me. Like, man, I really screwed up this aileron. What did I do wrong? It was the table. <laughs> so, you know, halfway through, I started to realize exactly what was going on. I was, uh, uh, I was working from the center of the leading edge outward, and I started to notice that, that the center was ever so slightly lower. And that's because either side of the aileron was higher because there was a bow in my table. <sighs> so, you know, I, I moved everything to the end and I finished it out and I got it all straight. And I, I think the aileron came out beautifully. No twist in it. Uh, the edge, leading edge is a little wavy. And I think that's because of me having to go back and fix that little bit of a bow that I was putting into it because of the table problem. Um, wow, gotta fix that. So I will be uh, fixing and reinforcing my table to get that bow out of it. Uh, that was the problem, not the aileron. Um, Make sure your equipment is good. So that's what's going on there. Uh, and now I'm going to start working on the next aileron. So there's two of them. So as with all things, you got to do both. And uh, I think what I'm going to do after I finish the second aileron, instead of moving on to the flaps, I'm going to start on the other wing. Uh, talked to a couple of you about this in the past that, you know, I said I, I decided that I was going to do one wing, get it completely finished, and then go to the other wing and uh, I regret that decision now. So I think I'm gonna get the other wing up to the exact same point that my current wing is, which is basically all the way up to having the fuel tank done except not closed. Uh, and then, then I can do them both at the same time, get everything finished and happy and uh, it'll make me feel better. I just, it's been bugging me for a while now that I, I did not do the other wing at the same time. So I've got to rectify that. So that's where I'm at now. Fun, fun. Hey guys, I had a really good question asked um, in, in, in the comments of, of one of the videos, and that is, how do you afford this? Um, the question was kind of posed as, how do you afford the Vans kits? Do you buy them all up front? Do you, uh, do you buy each individually, etc.? Uh, but I wanted to take it more of, I, I wanted to broaden the question, maybe put it on its ear a little bit, and just talk about affording building your own plane. <clears throat> I've talked about this previously, why you would build a plane versus, um, you know, just buying one outright. And I, I listed a whole bunch of reasons why I thought it was a better idea to build, but a lot of that had to do with, you know, my own prejudices and the fact that I just like building things. From an affording it standpoint, though, um, I, think, I think at some level, you have to kind of accept that uh, aviation isn't cheap. And I, you can run the numbers a lot of different ways, and I don't know that you're ever going to come up with the math uh, to prove that aviation and owning your own plane makes financial sense. If you do, please send me those numbers. Um, I, I tried every which way. And I think there's a, there's a very narrow band of like, uh, if it's just too far to drive, but just too short to, to buy a ticket on Delta, where you can kind of make sense out of it, but it's still infinitely more expensive than actually either driving or buying a ticket on Delta. And so it's really about time at that point. Uh, but that's the only way is if you take into the time component and you say, you know what, my time is worth a lot. Uh, therefore, owning my own plane makes sense. <clears throat> Otherwise, it really doesn't make sense. It, it just doesn't. So, with that, with the knowledge that owning a plane doesn't really make sense, 
and with the knowledge that uh, <laughs> it's it's you know it's it's tough to rationalize it. Here's how I rationalized it. Um, first of all, I like building things, and if you like building things too, and you know you like these long-term projects, you can build a lot of air a lot of aircraft, a lot of airplane for very little money. That is my ice maker for those people that wonder what that beeping is. Um, it loves itself. I love it too, actually. It's really nice when it's hot out here. So um, <clears throat> the way that Vans structures it is, is you have kits. You have the empennage kit, you have the wing kit, you have the fuselage kit, and then you have the uh, finish kit. Those things together right now, I, I, you'd have to look on the Vans website, but it, for the RV-10 is like $60,000 total. And it's like, Maybe it was 50, 55, and it was like 65 if you get the quick builds. Something like that. Don't, don't quote me on those numbers. It's somewhere around there. And plus, those numbers change. Um, <clears throat> but you don't have to buy them all at once. You don't have to just sh shovel out $65,000 and have all those comes at, c kits come at you, thankfully. Um, what you do is you buy each kit individually. And then what I have been doing, and probably what a lot of other builders have done, is to save money for the next kit while they're building the current kit so that each kit is basically paid off. <clears throat> so, uh, for example, the empennage kit for me costs 3,000 something, it's up to 4,000 now, so the empennage kit is $4,000, plus you're gonna need probably two to $3,000 worth of tools. Um, so let's say, just for an easy number, $7,000. Um, which is not a real easy number, but $7,000 how long would it take you to earn up $7,000? That, that's a different equation for everybody. Some people have $7,000 burning a hole in their pocket. Other people, it's gonna take them two years to earn up $7,000. Where is it for you? Th knowing that, knowing how much, mo how much money you can save over a, what period of time, tells you exactly how long you have to build the previous kit, right? So for example, if uh, <clears throat> the wings kit, uh, the wings kit cost ten thousand dollars. I'm not even talking about shipping, which is a couple hundred bucks, but ten thousand dollars for the wings. If you put away, um, I should have prepared better. If you put away a hundred dollars a week, right, and it costs ten thousand dollars, then you have a hundred weeks to build your empennage before you can order the wings. So a uh, hundred dollars per week. It's, a, it's, it's not a lot of money. Uh, you know, you're, you're talking about $400 a month. I mean, it's, it's a car payment, right? So <clears throat> I think, but that means, gosh, that's two years to build the empennage. I mean, I did it in eight months and I've, I've heard of people that do it in a couple months. So how fast you wanna build, I think determines how much money you save or how quickly you save. Uh, I think you have to, I think you have to prioritize. Uh, don't go out off, don't go out to eat. Don't buy that latest thing that you want. You know, you want a plane, and so build that first. Um, the other way I rationalize it is I, I looked at uh, some various planes that I wanted to buy, some low-wing planes that were of a quality and of a nature that I liked. Uh, the Cessna uh, TTX, the Columbia 400, the Cirrus SR-22, uh, a couple others. <clears throat> and with the avionics and all that that I wanted, these planes were uh, between, I mean, six hundred and seven hundred thousand dollars. And I realized very quickly. I mean, even if you got like a used two thousand five, I don't know, Cirrus, you're still looking at two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars at this point. Uh, so I I looked really hard. Like if I if I were to build this plane, and it took me five years to build this plane in five years would I have that $600,000 saved up to buy that plane? No. In that five years, would I have the $120,000 saved up to build my own plane? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I can do that. And so what I'm doing is I'm trading time for money. My time for money. 
That's all you're doing. That's how you rationalize it. I mean, in the end, there's, like I said, there's empanage, it's $4,000. There's the wing kit, it's $10,000. There's the fuselage, it's $16,000. There's the uh, finishing kit, it's, it's $15,000. That doesn't cover avionics at all, um, which, uh, those are gonna be expensive. Uh, or the engine, I mean, right now, the Lycoming IO540 brand new is $47,000, right? Um, or the prop, like a prop can, can run you up to $10,000. <clears> These are big numbers you're dealing with. So you have to come up with a way to afford it, and the way I have afforded it is to stretch it out over time. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, in the end, part of it is also the journey of just doing something cool, you know, building a plane. And, and at the, I, I, I really truly believe that I will trust this aircraft way more than I would that, that Cirrus that I would buy, even though I, I, I would love to own a Cirrus. I mean, if Cirrus, you wanna give me a plane, I'll take it, it's awesome. But I feel like I would trust this plane more than the Cirrus because I know every rivet. And um, that level of knowledge is, I think, priceless myself. Um, so, yeah, um, you can't afford it, then maybe this isn't the hobby for you. Uh, you probably can afford it. Maybe don't get an RV-10. You know, the RV-10 is by far the most expensive offering the Vans has. Some of their, some of their other aircraft are a lot less expensive. Um, uh, both in terms of like the manpower it takes to put it together, the time it takes to put it together, and the money it takes to actually acquire all the stuff to put it together. Uh, this is by far the most expensive one. Again, I got wife approval. Uh, so, uh, I would say look at other offerings that Vans have. They've got a wonderful suite of aircraft. Look at used aircraft. If you're looking to get into this and you're trying to figure out ways to save money, look at used Vans aircraft if you want to get into a more, or older used kits. Like people start uh, an empennage on a plane and they realize it's just, it's just not for them. Well, take a builder with you, go to your local EAA chapter and take a builder with you to look at it and see if they did a good job. Because if they did a good job, you could save a buttload of money and time <clears throat> buying somebody else's kit. It happens all the time. Um, plus, I just want to see the plane fly. It's a, it's a shame that somebody would get it half built and then, then quit. That would suck. Um, gosh, what else? I guess, I guess that's it. You know, this is a, this is a hell of a process. I think, I think it is entirely possible to save up the money for all the pieces except for the engine, uh, specifically on this plane. I mean, you know, the, the fuselage is the most expensive one at $16,000, but can you save up $16,000? I mean, if you put away five, 600, maybe $1,000 a month, that's a, that's a payment on something, right? You're, you're making a payment, like you're, you're making a payment for a car, or oh, that's a really nice car, or you know, something like a house payment or whatever. If you can put that money away, just sock it away and don't touch it. Don't even look at it. It grows really quickly. And if you could put $1,000 a month, well, you've got, I mean, that's a year, you've got $12,000, right? Um, now, a lot of people can't do that. I get it. Um, I can't do that right now. But if, if, if you can, if you can figure out a way to save money and you know exactly how much you can commit each month, then you'll know exactly how long it will take you to build your plane. And I think, <clears throat> I think a large number of aircraft, a, lot, a large number of the Vans aircraft take 10 years, not because it took the builder 10 years to actually put the parts together, but because of money. It took them 10 years to actually come up with all the money. The beauty is, at the end of that 10 years, they have their own paid for airplane. And that's what I'll have. I'll have my own paid for airplane. Whereas with, a, like I said, that Cirrus, that beautiful Cirrus, the, you know, the, I looked online earlier, it was a 2013, very low time, and it was like $700,000. In 10 years, would I have $700,000 to just drop on that plane to pay it off? Probably not, no. Um, and the other thing is with aircraft, aircraft are paid for like uh, houses. So you're gonna be paying on it for 30 years. And so by the time you do pay it off in 30 years, you'll have paid probably more than double, right? I mean, it's just, just silly. Um, so I think in a way, in, in, in a way, uh, there's no good way to rationalize this. It's not remotely affordable, but of the two, I think building your own plane is infinitely more affordable than not. And now I'm just rambling. <laughs> so anyways, I hope that answers your question. Uh, if you have any more questions like this, I'm more than happy to discuss or answer, or if you want, we can uh, you know, jump on a, a, a Skype or a Google Hangouts or appear.in or any of those other uh, uh, telephone type 
conversations and talk about this stuff and we can just just chat. I'm more than happy. Anyways, thanks guys. Hey guys. Well, it's mistake admitting time. It seems like uh, so many of these videos of late are me admitting to mistakes and I don't know if that's uh, a good thing or a bad thing. It, uh, it, it, um, in one way, it kind of empowers me because I feel like, hey, I'm owning up to them and really all of them I've been able to easily correct. And I guess in a way, I also hope that you can take solace from it and know that, hey, mistakes are gonna happen and they are completely recoverable. Well, here's one I made. So here's my left aileron and assembled perfectly. I put it on the, the plane, you know, put it in the wing, put the bolts through, worked beautifully, can't, can't complain. I'm assembling the right one and at some point in the process, I failed to remember that the right one is a 100% mirror of the left one. I know that seems obvious, uh, but at some point I screwed up and you can see it right here. Uh, this line of rivets right here on the bottom, these are the pop rivets, these are the final rivets that you put in when you're assembling these main ribs. On this side, they're, they're on the wrong place. This is the top and this is the bottom up, up here. These holes should be here. Um, so at some point, I got these main ribs backwards on the right one, so crap. Um, so I'm gonna pull this off. And by the way, the reason this is bad is because now these don't line up, uh, these holes don't line up, and the skin uh, is way off. So, uh, darn, <laughs> curse words. Uh, so I'm going to pull these guys out. I've got to drill out some rivets here. And on the other side, same thing, drill out the four rivets so that this piece stays. Swap the main rib on either side, re-rivet them all together, and then hopefully it will all fit. So that's what I'm doing now is fixing a mistake. Um, mistakes are not a big problem, honestly. Mistakes like this are so minor. Uh, I know the skin, like if I had to redo the entire skin, cost $18, as you know, I've already screwed up one of these skins when I poked a hole in the wrong place. No big deal, $18. I can't imagine that if I had to replace these ribs that they're much more. So you're probably looking like maybe a total of $50 to fix you know, this mistake. Uh, but of course those add up, so you want to try to not do them. The other issue though, actually it's not even the money that's the problem, is that it just takes two weeks or so for, for vans to get that stuff to you. Um, because they, I think they do just-in-time manufacturing. You know, they don't make this piece until you order it, which I understand completely. Uh, so anyways, darn it. Um, I say it all the time, pay attention. Uh, I don't know how I did this one. This is, I, I thought I was being careful when I was following the instructions, but for whatever reason, I goofed and I got it backwards. Oh well. So there you go, guys. I'm gonna blaze through the work in the background so that you guys don't have to actually watch me continue working on the second aileron. It was just like the first. The mistake that I discussed where I had those two primary ribs swapped was exactly what, that was the exact problem. That was exactly what I did wrong. Uh, I fixed it, as you can see in this image. So now everything looks correct. It's all together, it works, and I have two fully functioning ailerons. Uh, so for my next trick, I'm gonna start working on the other wing as I discussed. Uh, and uh, sorry this video was a little longer than I'd intended, but you know, you get what you pay for, right? Speaking of that, thank you very much for all my Patreon supporters. You guys make this possible. And if you guys would do, be so kind, please uh, like or thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed because it helps with rankings. Thanks everybody, see you next time.